I'm not wearing a mask right now because I don't have any students in the classroom. And uh, the first day was a little bit of a mess with students coming and going, teachers coming in the room, administration coming in the room. And so I'm just doing a recap of what the first day of Studio ALA for a television broadcast was like. And you can hear some noise next door. It's just been a, a noisy day. So that's where I'm not wearing a mask. And basically I'm going to recreate what was said much more briefly uh, just over the next about 10 or 12 minutes of the first day of television broadcast. Alright, welcome to Studio ALA. This is the television broadcast class. And we'll just go a few, through a few things on the first day of school. And the teaching will actually begin the next time because I know how it works. A lot of people are trading around with their classes and they're not really sure what their schedule is going to be. So I don't want to have to catch anyone up. Let's just go ahead and have an introduction to begin with and then start teaching next week. So about Studio ALA, <clears throat> a little bit about why we call it Studio ALA. So we run it like a business and we do that because I come from a professional career. I'm not really a traditional college educated teacher. So there's guys that actually go to college to become teachers. I went to college to do studio production, media production work. And then about 18 years ago I taught for MATC for three years, which they now call MTech. Uh, and then I went back to work in the career. Uh, I originally had a recording studio, worked at a couple of recording studios, and my last job was running the TV channel here in town, Spanish Fork 17, which I did for about 15 years. <clears throat> So I decided to run this as if it were a business. This is supposed to be preparing you for doing work in a career field. So we call it Studio ALA, and you guys actually are the staff management. We'll pick someone to be the manager, the station manager. We'll have an assistant station manager, and we'll have an assignment desk. I'll be the general manager. Uh, I like to say that people uh, you know, earn their money or uh, they get fired or those kinds of things just like we're in a real kind of a business situation and we call it Studio ALA. Morning announcements. You guys have all seen the morning announcements for good or bad. Uh, that's what we do and usually about halfway through the class we stop whatever kind of education is going on and we set up and uh, videotape the morning announcements. Uh, we don't stream them live on YouTube because we've had so many problems with YouTube, but it's just as if we were streaming them live. So we record them and then we upload them to YouTube. Uh, it's just a safety gap so that we know that we have the recording and, uh, and can upload it to YouTube and make sure it's going to work on YouTube. And then, five minutes later, the whole school is watching it on YouTube. Uh, talking about those morning announcements, I guess a little bit more. Everybody here will have a crew position. So three people will have a staff position eh, for about a month, maybe three weeks to a month, and then we'll change out the staff positions. And we'll do the same with the crew positions, but everybody here will have a crew position. And so, as you can imagine, that would include cameras, lights. This here is a microphone. We have two shotgun mics coming down from the ceiling. You'd set up a flag here, and uh, the person doing the pledge is speaking into that mic. For that mic over there, that's for the anchor desk. That's the set. You bring out the anchor desk and the chairs. You bring out the flag. We call that a position for set and props. We have a teleprompter. So you're looking at uh, a piece of glass that has writing on it, and you're reading the script on that piece of glass, but it looks like you're looking straight through the glass at the camera. <clears throat> uh, let's see, is there anything else out here? You have the floor director making sure that everything's happening good. Um, that everyone's in their positions and performing properly for their positions. The director makes sure of that. Let's see, we also have the person that sets up the cables. So the, the equipment all has to be cabled up. Power cords, the uh, signal going back from the camera into the equipment. And that equipment is in the control room. So in the control room we have a technical director, a video control, and a sound engineer. 
the signal goes into them, whether it's audio or video, they manipulate the signal and then they put it on YouTube. We're just using the free software OBS for, uh, I guess you'd call it mixing the video signals. And we use uh, a switcher, uh, an ATEM Blackmagic switcher for switching between the cameras. And that's pretty much it for the morning announcements, but we do that uh, every morning, so you guys are A days, the other class is B days, and uh, probably 25 minutes of our time will be spent on announcements. Let's see about the course itself. So there's about three main components. It's pretty simple. I give you a study guide that's about 10 pages, and we go through uh, just almost a page a day, and It'll just be the, the study of that day, such as this is how we run a camera, uh, this is the software we use, just various things that you need to learn, probably close to a hundred new terms you've never used before. And you learn those terms, you learn those procedures, uh, you'll fill in blanks and things like that on the study guide, and then once a week there will be a quiz, and you take the quiz for that section that we discussed on the, on the study guide, so if you're here, which is a lot of the key, and you've been able to fill out the study guide, or if you're doing it online, you filled out the study guide, then you're ready for the quiz. You take the quiz on Canvas. Uh, the quiz and the study guide, you must keep up with. And with the quiz, you get 100%. So if you have to take it three times, I'll allow up to three times, you take it and essentially until you get 100%. So that means everybody here is going to get an A on the quiz. It's not about trying to trick you. Um, in some ways, it's not even about how well you remember things. It's really about learning. And so you go through the quiz and you go, oh, I missed those two questions, and you learn. And then when you take it again, you get those two questions right. The end goal is everything you've learned on the study guide, everything you've learned with the quizzes, you complete all of that when you have a, a completed study guide, it's finished and you get 100 points for turning in the completed study guide and you're ready to take the state test. If you know the answers to the questions on the quiz, if you know everything that's in the study guide, then the state test should be actually pretty easy. State test is right around 50 questions, it's multiple choice, uh, has nothing to do with me, you literally get on a computer, you sign in and for about 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, you're answering multiple choice questions mostly, and it's all related to everything that you've already studied, all the quizzes you've already taken, and a lot of the hands-on things you've done. If you've done the lighting, if you've done the sound, if you've done the cameras, then you'll be able to answer those questions. If you get 80% or better on the state test, uh, I automatically give you an A for the test, and you qualify for a certificate. The certificate from the state is for everyone that has shown uh, an advanced knowledge and if you get 80% or better you get that certificate and that certificate can be used in your career. When I was running Spanish Fork 17, I wouldn't take on any interns or any employees that hadn't passed the state test in high school. That's how I knew that they already knew a lot, that I didn't have to start from scratch. This is a camera, this is a, this is a zoom control, this is a microphone. They already knew a lot of what they needed to know to be able to work, and then they just needed to know how we did things, our system, and within a week they were a valuable employee to me. So that's basically it about the course. Uh, you, do know, you do need to know how to get on Canvas. If there's anyone that has any trouble with Canvas, I can help you or whoever you want to have help you. Uh, you've got to be able to get on Canvas. That's where the quizzes are going to be. I myself am still learning on Canvas. Uh, last semester was the first time that I really had to use Canvas uh, because everyone was online at home. I was using mostly Quizlet and just things here in the classroom, but now everything's going to be on Canvas. I'll have you pick a computer. Uh, the class is fairly small, so we might be able to space it out about every other computer. Uh, the tour of Studio ALA and the equipment. Okay, I will do a brief tour in a second about me. Well, just quickly then, I went to high school at the other fork. 
I went to American Fork, and now I'm living in Spanish Fork. Um, I also, so I graduated high school at American Fork. I went to Utah State University up in Logan and uh, learned a lot about music and ran their recording studio there. After that, I actually, I worked at a recording studio and then I also ran my own media production company with a recording studio. Uh, and then after that, I came to Spanish Fork pretty much. I, I had uh, a couple of years in between where I was a, a national media producer, publicist for a company. But uh, main thing is the last 15 years before I came here, uh, I ran the TV channel. And Mr. Moody, who was my predecessor here, became a friend of mine. He was one of the few teachers that would actually bring me content to put on the television channel. You know, sporting events, plays, music concerts from ALA. And one time he said, why don't you come over here? So I came over here and then the next year he retired. So I ended up doing all of this. That's the short story anyway. Uh, let's see, I still enjoy almost everything related to media and so I'm glad that I get a chance to teach it. I would do it as a hobby if I wasn't teaching it. Let's see, I'm going to ask some things about you and I'll pick the staff management. But for the folks that are watching this video online, I won't bore you with uh, hearing from the other students here about them and their interests or you know, who I'm going to pick for staff management. This is really just a quick introduction. I think I will do a quick tour of the studio now. This is all going to change. Well, right now we have what would be called edit bays. Usually you have a room with a computer and you sit there with your client and you do the video editing. Really it's just a whole bunch of computers. But this is going to change. We have had it where we kind of have the classroom and the sound stage over here. That's my desk and my computers. And then the students sit over here and do their editing. We use a Adobe Premiere. But we're gonna probably change this for the assigned seating reasons and things like that. We're going to have these uh, rows change. They're all going to face towards a projector screen, and we're going to do away with the chairs in the classroom. Uh, we do use, like I say, Adobe Premiere. It's on these computers, and you can get it at home if you contact Brent Fulton, and he will get you authorized so you can install Adobe free on your home computer. Uh, you saw that microphone, that microphone, there for recording for our live broadcasts. We have the uh, flag there we bring out. That's the anchor desk we bring out. Cameras, lights, curtains, sound foam, cables here we use for various things. This is a sound booth we don't need particularly for anything I can think of for a TV broadcast. Right now I've got a bunch of stands in there. But we do use it for the digital audio class. Uh, this is actually where we turn on the lights. <laughs> A little bit ghetto in that we just have uh, power strips, but turns on these lights out here. Someday maybe I'll get a lighting console. That's the teleprompter, so the camera sits right here and uh, focuses through the glass. And this glass right here is where the words are projected. These two glass windows go to this room, which is called the control room. And we're kind of rewiring some things in here, but we have an audio mixing board. This is where OBS is for doing all the uh, video mixing. This is where the video switcher is. And uh, the video cameras come in here first, then go over to OBS. And the sound is mixed in with it and it is sent out to the world. That's the basic tour of Studio ALA.